Okay, people, check this out. This is going to be the first video of a couple uh, concerning jig fishing. Um, I realize that a lot of you guys don't even realize what it is that you're buying whenever you uh, look at getting a jig. There's a bunch of videos all over YouTube about how to fish a jig and what trailers to use and all kind of stuff like that, but nobody tells you what jig to use in the first place. Um, everybody can tell you a couple of the jig designs. Everybody's familiar, familiar with a football head or a casting head or something like that, um, but there's a whole bunch of different jig designs. Nobody talks about grass jigs or um, different types of swim jigs and different types of uh, structure heads and all kind of stuff like that. So I realize there's a lot of like surface level information, but uh, they're never telling you about how to select the the good the right quality of jig in the first place. So I'm going to use as an example Brandon Cobb's all-purpose jig. If you've seen the tackle warehouse unboxings I've done, I bought a freaking ton of these because they're that good. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this open so I can tell you about some of the features on this jig in particular. This isn't the only one that comes like this. There's a, a lot of other really good options on the market. I just prefer to use this one because the all-purpose jig is good for all purposes. So straight out the package, the first thing that you're going to notice is that all of the skirt, all the skirt tabs are free. They're not a bunch of them stuck together. Low quality jigs, when you buy them and take them out of the package, you're gonna find that they're all clumped up. You're gonna have to take them apart by hand. That's gonna take extra time out of uh, being able to fish with them. And um, it's gonna make your jig look really bad underwater because all the skirts, you want the skirt to be waving and moving around underwater. If they're all clumped together, you're gonna have trouble uh, with that. It's not gonna look good underwater. Second thing is that you're gonna notice the distance between the brush guard and the hook. You don't want a jig to have the weed guard way up vertical like that. You're going to get hung up a lot more. That's going to be an issue as you're trying to um, fish. You're going to be able to get better hook sets like that, maybe, but you're going to throw it around cover and get snagged on the first cast, I promise you. So you want it, the, the weed guard, brush guard, to be right down on the hook. You don't want to be able to stick more than just the tip of your finger through it. If you can do that, if you can put your whole finger through it, or more than one finger through it, it's probably not a very good quality jig. You don't want to um, be fishing with something like that. Also, third thing is the hook. You want a black nickel hook. If it's bronze, that's something that you don't want to use. You want a black nickel hook. Bronze hooks will bend out, they'll break, they're weak. You don't want to mess with those. A black nickel hook, they stay sharp for a strong, uh, for a long amount of time. They actually have a lot better uh, hookup percentages also, and they don't bend out on you when you hook a big one. Now, the third thing is the um, trailer keeper. That designer trailer keeper is actually pretty standard. If I can get this thing to focus. This trailer keeper design is actually pretty standard. It's a good on most jigs, and that's okay. But on a really, really high quality jig, it's going to be a wire keeper. There's going to be uh, one metal tab coming up, or you have one coming out of each side. And that's going to keep your trailer pinned on there and it won't slide off. It won't come off at all. It doesn't matter how hard you skip it or how many fish you catch on it. That thing is on there real good. If it comes off of that trailer keeper, the trailer is probably going to be blown out. You need to replace it with another one. Uh, next thing, uh, jigs that are t uh, hand tied or wire wrapped. If you look at the AP jig here, I'll hold it up. If you can see, if you can see that black part right there you can see that is wire wrapped. Some of them are tied with copper wire, others are tied with black wire. But the idea is that this wire or uh, a thread, whether it be hand tied with thread or whether it be wire wrapped around, that keeps the jig skirt on there a lot longer. It, keeps, it actually gives you so much more longevity out of that jig. Um, especially if you're somebody who leaves your tackle boxes in storage or if you leave them out on the deck of the boat where they can get hot. If you have just a regular uh, rubber skirt keeper that most jigs come with, that skirt keeper can, it can overheat and, or they can dry rot also. They can dry rot and they get brittle and they just break and fall apart on you. The whole skirt falls off and you need another jig or you have to replace the skirt yourself. Or um, if you have the regular um, rubber, we, rubber um, bands that they use to put skirts on. Um, not only can they dry right and come off, but they can overheat in the sun. They'll actually melt and fall off and fall apart from you um, that way also. So the ones that are wire wrapped or the ones that are hand tied, they hold up and they stay on there as long as the jig is um, usable. 
So that's going to extend the life of a jig a whole lot more. Um, also, what you're going to notice when, a, when you buy a really, really high quality jig is you want a medium stiff weed guard. If it's too stiff, you're going to miss bites and you're not going to be able to uh, hook up on fish very well. If you do, you're going to have to hammer that hook, on, that hook through the jaws so hard that it's really going to be putting you through a lot of extra work. Some of y'all like to jack them real hard anyway. <laughs> but um, generally, you want it to be sort of a medium stiff. If it's too soft, you're going to be snagging all the time. And if it's too stiff, you're going to be having issues with your hookup ratio. A medium stiff, you want it to bend just a little bit but not too much. Okay, so you want to test that out a little bit. Now this other jig, this is another AP jig. This one is just slightly different size. This one is lighter. The original one that I just showed you is a half ounce jig. This is a 3 8 ounce jig. Uh, the difference between the two, the only difference between the two actually, is the difference in hook size. There is a size 3 aught hook on this 3 8 ounce one, and there is a size 4 aught at least on the uh, half ounce size. That's another way that you can tell that you're buying a jig from a quality jig maker. They're not going to all be exactly the same from size to size. You don't really want to have an 8 ounce jig or a um, uh, 3 16 ounce jig, 5 16 whatever type of jig it is, size it is that you're buying. If it comes with a lighter head, you generally want it to have a smaller hook. The bigger and heavier the head is, you're going to be using it typically around deeper water and more uh, heavier cover. So at that point, you're going to want a little bit bigger hook. Last thing to go over is the gap of the hook. If you have uh, a hook that's got too much gap, that's another way that you're going to get hung up all the time. And if there's not enough gap, you're going to be missing a lot of uh, fish whenever you get bit that way. Now, you want to be able to put a full-size trailer on there. Um, like even a full-size creature bait or beaver on there and still have enough gap to really pin that hook into the mouth of the fish. If that thing is, um, if it's really narrow, you don't have enough bite, enough gap between the point of the hook and the bend of the hook, you put your trailer on, you're going to lose a lot of fish like that. Uh, if you manage to hook them in the first place, there's still just not enough gap in there where if they come up and shake their head or whatever, you know, the bait will come out one side of the fish's mouth and fish will go one way, bait will go the other way, and they'll just be gone. So you want to make sure that the bend and uh, the amount of gap that you have between the point and the bend of the hook are is enough for you to be able to put on a full-size trailer and still be able to uh, hook that fish and keep it pinned in his mouth. So those are just a couple of jig fishing uh, tips about how to buy the right jig in the first place before you even get to the lake. Uh, hopefully you guys can take that information and be able to do something with it. So, just a short video. I'll see you guys next time.